everybody and lovely to have you back here at pajama school uh, i really miss you all loads and i hope you're having a great time with your families um, so today we're going to do our same little routine we're going to have a warm-up we're going to then do some phonics some english and maths and then a little bit of topic at the end uh, before i start i just need to say oh my goodness i made a mistake in the last video I, uh, you know, when we were pouring water into the jugs, I said that the, there was a large jug and a small container. And I said that the large jug had uh, a less uh, of a capacity than the little jug, which wasn't right. Well done if you spotted that. I think I must have been half asleep. Whoops. I'm surprised you didn't notice as well, Lima. You're normally good at these things. But never mind. We all make mistakes sometimes, don't we? So when we're ready, should we get started? Find a space in the room and let's stretch right up. Oh, my shoulder just clicked. I must have needed that stretch. Stretch out, so wiggle your fingers. Stretch to your left. Can you remember which way that is? How far round can you go? Be careful with your body though. And then back to the middle. How far round to the right can you go? And back to the middle. Okay, shake your arms. Shake them high. Shake them low. Let's do fire hands up. We like this in my class. Fire hands up. And rain fingers down. One more time. Fire hands up. Try and really flow your hands like that. So they really look like fire. Rain fingers down. One more time. Fire hands up. Rain fingers down. And for today's little warm up, shall we try to do... Let's do our star jumps again. I think we did well at those. So let's do 10 star jumps when you're ready. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woohoo! Well done. So we're going to warm up our phonics today by looking at the sounds we learned last week. I'm going to show these uh, to you in front of the screen. And can you say what sound each one is? If you want to challenge yourself, you could even tell me the the words that we say. So remember, when it says air, we say air, air, it's not fair. Have a try at telling me which ones these are. You know that one, definitely I've just said that one, haven't I? Well done. And last one. Okay. I've got three tricky words here. Do you remember these that we got from Lima's tricky bag? So let's have a look if you can remember these three words we learnt last week. And this was the tricky part, remember? We've got friend. The tricky part some that's the tricky part here and today okay just to quickly go through these sounds we've got or oh, or oh, shut the door ah ah start the car air air it's not fair er uh, er uh, a better letter ow ow brown cow and er uh, er uh, nurse with a purse well done if you remembered those fantastic this words. week we've sent out some phonics learning to do uh, a, some of it's the words that we looked at last week so you can have a look at those videos to help you uh, i'm going to carry on with some sounds on here so you could you could even try and do both if you've already recapped the sounds for last week you could have a little quick recap and then carry on with this new sound today so oops here it is this is our sound you R E making the word your sorry the sound your so the way we remember this one is by saying your your sure it's pure your your sure it's pure so the way you can remember this one the sure it's pure um on the read writing cards it's got a picture similar to this but it's drawn a little bit better i've tried my best so i've drawn a, a witch who's handing a potion to a little boy maybe he wants to uh, grow some magic wings or something like that and he's saying is this potion pure how can i be sure and she goes sure it's pure and hands it over so that's the story behind that one to help us remember i'm going to write some words under here and we're going to try and sound them out together 
every word is going to have our your sound in it. So if you keep that one in your head now, your, you'll be able to sound these out just fine. Here are five words that all have the your sound in. In a moment, uh, you can have a try at reading them. Um, so just pause the video now and have a little try on your own, then we'll read them together. Okay, so this one starts with s, your, s, your. That's a bit weird. This letter here in this word, it, it, s, your isn't a word. So try that, making the sh sound, sh, your, sure. So this one is the sure, ensure it's pure. It's a bit strange in that one because it's making an or sound. So I'm going to put a bubble around that. It's a bit of a weird word. This next one might be a little bit easier. So we've got p, your, p, your, pure. When you blend it together, that's in our word, in our phrase as well. Sure, it's pure. This next one, k, your, cure. Maybe the little boy's looking for a cure for something. Maybe he's got really smelly feet wants to cure them. Cure means to sort of fix something that's making somebody poorly. So a cure. The next one is a bit longer. Well done if you got this one. M, a, n, your. Manure. Manure is what we use to fertilise um, plants. So it's kind of like soil, but it's made from rotten things. So manure, you can use, sometimes you can use animal droppings as manure. So it's a bit of a funny word, that one. The next one. Sec your secure secure secure. The word there is secure. That means with something safe, it's secure, and it's not in any trouble or anything like that. Okay. On the next page, what I'd like you to do is, I want you to try and spell the words that I read. So, for I've written write the words, and we've got a four-letter word first of all. Cover up this side so we're not peeking. You can still see that one. That's fine. Um, the first word I'd like you to write is the word cure, k, your, cure. So it should look like this, k, u, r, e, cure. Give yourself a tick if you managed to get that one well done. The next one is really weird. I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little lines to let us know there are seven letters here. This word does not sound the way it's spelt at all. It's a very strange word. The word is, I'll say it in the weird way to help you realise. So the word is picture, picture, picture. The way we say picture doesn't sound like this at all, but the spelling is picked your Have a go while I'm trying to write it too. Picked your. How weird is that? Picked your. The way we say it is picture, but that's actually the spelling. This was a bit of a challenge, really. It's kind of a different way of sounding that uh, those three letters out. This is more the kind of spelling you're more likely to see. So cure, pure, sure. It sounds like it's spelled a little bit more, but this one is a bit of a wobbly one. Okay, for the next little game, I'm going to draw a picture. See if you can write the word that goes with the picture underneath, okay? okay. Here are the two pictures. This one's supposed to be a fish, and that's a fishing rod. And let, and what do we, what would we call this that would have the your sound in it? That one's a bit harder as well. Have a go and I'll give you a clue in a moment. Are you ready? If you've guessed them, uh, we can try and write them together in a moment. This one is called a l-your, a lure, a lure, a fishing lure. Luring something means trying to reel it in and catch it. So you're trying to capture a fish here using a lure. This one begins with s. Do you know what it is yet? He's very, very sure. Have a try at writing lure and sure. That's always a word I find hard to say. Practice saying it, see if you can say it better than me. Some people say law because it's easier, but I suppose the sound will be l, your, your. So your is l u r e. It's also not a, ooh, that's a funny e. It's not a word we use that often, unless you're a fisherman or a fisherwoman. Uh, the next one, s u r e, spells sure. 
Well done if you've got those. Okay, Lima's got something for us now. Are you ready? Let's have a look. Oh, Lima's got his exciting bag of tricky words again. Thanks for bringing that, Lima. Shall we have a look inside and see what words we've got? Ooh, are you ready? Let me have a look. Oh, I can feel a few in here. I've got one. Are you ready? Oh, I like this one. We know a little song, don't we, for this one, the really short one that goes, S-A-I-D, said, said, S-A-I-D, said, said, S-A-I-D, said, 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 said. And I'll link that video below because it's a really good catchy one with all the tricky words that we like to practice. So this word here, S-A-I-D, spells said, and it's tricky because you'd think the middle bit would just be an E. Eh. But it's not. It's A and I making the eh sound. So I'm going to draw under that one so we know that's the tricky bit. I'll draw under here. The, oops, the A and the I are the tricky part on that word. So I'll keep that one down here. Should we get another tricky word? What's it going to be? Ooh. Such. Ooh. Oh. Such. What's such? Do you know what that is? Oh, of course, it must be school. So this one's super weird because that bit, it, so, it looks like ch because C and H usually make ch. But in this word, it's tricky because that actually makes what sound? K, k, s, k, ooh, ooh, school. So we're at pyjama school right now because I'm in my pyjamas. Are you in your pyjamas too, I wonder? Or have you, got, have you probably got dressed, haven't you, to enjoy the day? School. The next one, let's see what we've got. This one I see spelt a little bit wobbly all the time. It's a very cheeky word. Was. W A S. That's so weird. There are two tricky parts to this. The A, because it's making an off oh sound, was. W -oh -z. And the S, because it's making a Z sound. W -oz was. It looks like was. I was going to the shops. I was having fun. So whenever you need to write was, the way I remember it is thinking of the word was. Was. I was going to the shop. And if you do that, then you won't ever spell it wrong. Thanks for that, Lima. So last week we learnt about measure in our maths learning. And the week before we had a little bit of learning about addition. That means this symbol where it's a a line down and a line across. We call it add plus more all together. We had some lovely suggestions in the comments as well uh, and on our Twitter account as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly recap this. That means remind ourselves about it. And then we're going to move on to learning about this one, which we'll come back to in a moment. So our objective today is uh, can I solve that means figure out subtraction. That's this subtraction problems. We've already done a bit of add. Oops, that's a funny S. We've already done a bit of adding. So we're going to move on to some subtraction today and we'll spend a couple of days doing that one. I've written here the word recap. Recap. That means to go over. So we're going to recap addition first. I've written two questions on here. The first one is a, it has three numbers and the second one has two. So can you pause the video and have a go at solving these? So let's go through these now. The first one is adding three numbers together. We touched on that last time we, we looked at this. So four plus two plus one. That means four things. So I'm going to draw my maths pictures again. You can draw four plus two things plus one thing equals something. So I've drawn four things for that, two things for that, and one thing for that. So how do we figure out the answer? We count them all up. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The answer to that one is seven. You could have used your fingers because it's small enough that we can use all of our fingers. You could have used a number line, or you could have done this maths picture. You could have also counted on in your head. If you were feeling super smart today, you could have put that big number in your head, counted on two to get to six, and then counted on one more to get to seven. Well done for solving that one. Give yourself a tick. The next one, three plus six. You can do the same again with this one. 
or you can put six in your head, lock it in. So this is me. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I've got six in my head and I'm going to count on three. One, two, three. So six, seven, eight, nine. So that's just a picture of what I was doing in my head there. So the answer to three plus six is nine. Give yourself a tick for that one. I'm going to show you a question now. We're going to move on. And we're going to look at this symbol now, which is called subtraction. It can be called minus. It can be called takeaway. Less. Let's find out how to solve questions with this. You'll probably remember we've covered this before in, earlier in the year. So if I start with five and I take away one and it equals something, you can do the same thing as with add. All, the, all that we need to know is when we're taking away, the number is getting less, it's getting smaller. So if we started with five things, one, two, three, four, five, if we were adding one, we would draw an extra one, but we are taking away one, aren't we? So you can do five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we need to take away one. So you can cross it out like that. And what are we left with? One, two, three, four. There you go. That's a simple way to do that one. I bet some of you are already able to do that in your head quite, quite easily, but if you still need to draw pictures, that's absolutely fine. Some people prefer using pictures. Okay, I've put two more questions on the board. Uh, the first one says seven take away four. Now you could still draw these circles. So you can do seven circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is called jotting when you jot down the numbers like or the maths like this to help you do the working out. How many are we taking away? Four. So we're going to get less four. We're going to take four away, which is four less. So I'm going to go one, oops, sorry, one, two, three, four. Is that right? Have I taken four away? Yeah, that is right, isn't it? So I am left with one, two, three. There are three left over. Another way you can solve this, which is quite fun, is if you've got your Play-Doh handy, this, this is what I like to call smash, smash it subtraction. So if for this one, it says six take away, five is something. So I'm gonna make six Play-Doh balls. One, two, three, four. They don't have to be perfect five and then six and on here it says take away five so I need to get rid of five of my play-doh so I'm going to get my smashy hand ready I'm going to smash five one two three four five Whew. so I smashed five how many am I left over with I've got one left fantastic so we know the answer to six take away five is one so you can use different methods to solve subtraction questions. I'm going to put uh, some uh, questions on this side. I'll do some easy, medium and then hard ones for you to have a try at using these methods. So I've got your challenge here and this one says easier but still tricky. And we've got one question there, another one there, 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 there and there. I'm, in fact, I'm just going to draw a line down so we don't get confused these are two different questions and then on this one it says harder uh, we've got this question this question this one and this one I'll draw a line again and then we've got a mega challenge where you're taking away two times each number sentence in each calculation so this first one uh, you can use the methods we've talked about I'll just uh, maybe I'll put them in a box here actually to help us so you can do maths pictures you know with the numbers like that you could use your play-doh so I'll just put play-doh in a hand there to make the balls and smash them with your other hand so you can do smash you could even um you could even uh do a number line again like last time but instead of counting this way getting bigger so when if it was 1 to 20 instead of counting that way because we're getting less we're taking away we actually count that way so we're going, we're going down the number line. So if you've got an adult to help you, you could make a number line. Uh, the final method you could do is count in your head. So get the number in your head. Dee, 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 and count backwards because we're, we're getting smaller, we're getting less, aren't we? The number is, is shrinking because we're taking something away from it. So you could count in your head. Have a little go at these now. Okay, pause the video. So I'm going to solve these questions now. Let's get my pen ready. 10 take away 3 or 10 subtract 3. 
or you could say 10 minus 3. 3 less than 10. So we're gonna, you can get 10 on your fingers for this one and take away 3. 1, 2, 3. And we're left with 5, 6, 7. The answer to that one is 7. Hey, you might have spotted as well. We've got a number 1 there. We know that 3 and 7 make 10. So you might have already known that 10 take away 3 is 7 just from that number fact. 8 take away 4 is 4. 9 take away 1 is 8. You could count back for these or use any of our methods we've used. 6 take away 5 is 1. 12 take away 4 is 8. 11 take away 9 is 2. Give yourself a tick. That one I coloured orange because it was a bit harder. We're taking quite a lot away. The next lot, uh, the harder section, 22 take away 6 is 16. 30 take away 4 is 26, 15 take away 6 is 9, and 19 take away 5 is 14. Because these numbers were larger, uh, I'm interested to see how you solved them. Did you find using a number line was easier? Did you find counting back in your head? Or did you make all of those numbers out of Play-Doh? That must have taken a while. It's usually best to try and choose the quickest method so you can solve things quick as a flash like that. But it's really good to get to grips with using Play-Doh and drawings so that um, we can just check that we're doing things correctly as well until we're super confident. This next one was hard because we had to do two lots of taking away. What I would do is I'd take one number away and then maybe jot down what number it actually is and then take the next number. So 23 take away 3 is 20. We know that because there are three ones in, uh, in 23. We've just taken away three ones there. So we're just left with the tens, which is 20. And then if we take two away from 20, we end up with 18. Give yourself a tick if you got that one. And this one, 30 take 10 is 20 again. So I'm going to put 20 there. 20 take away five is 15. Wowee. Well done, everybody. Fantastic maths today. The objective for English today is can I describe a setting? Remember, we're trying to write those stories for Minnie the house uh, sprite. I nearly said fairy then. The house sprite. So we've got to keep our plans um, super duper and make sure we're being as creative as possible so that when she reads our stories, she'll be really impressed and it will help her sleep. So I'm going to try and think of a setting to use in my story. Remember the word setting? just means a place. So we're going to create a place and then describe it. So you can either use the sheet that I've uh, that we've sent out this week or you can just draw a box on your exercise book a bit like that or get your adult to do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. About half the page though, don't make it too small or you won't be able to draw it. And then inside uh, your box, we're going to start drawing our setting in the three billy goats gruff, they live on a beautiful hillside, don't they? With green grass, uh, luscious grass, that, that, that's a good adjective. The sun's shining, there are um, huge trees. You could do the setting similar to that one if you want to, or you can make yours a bit different. Maybe if you're using an animal that lives in the jungle, you could do a jungle instead. Or if your new goodies are something that lives in Antarctica, Maybe you could do a gorgeous ice scene. Think of a setting uh, and we're going to do that one. So mine, I use the three lemurs. So I'm going to do some special trees for the lemurs to live in. So I'm just going to draw some nice big trees on here. I think they're quite tall, the trees that lemurs live in. Maybe I'll research them and find out actually. So I'm going to do some nice tall trees. And make sure in your setting that you've got the bridge as well, because they have to cross the bridge to get past the troll, don't they? Or whatever your creature is. Mine was the, what did I call it again? The Glarfer. <laughs> that was on my wanted poster last week. So I'm going to, you could even draw your monster hiding under there. This this will really help us uh, so that when we come to write, we'll have all these ideas in our minds. It's to get our imaginations going. So I'm going to draw some more trees. I'm going to draw a beautiful sunshine shining through the trees. Maybe I'll think of some other animals that might live there as well or some beautiful tropical birds that are flying. 
There's a trick to drawing birds that are flying. If you just go duh, duh, like that, it looks a bit like birds flying in the sky far away. So you can sometimes do those. Um, maybe I'll draw some beautiful flowers. This is kind of your imagination, so you can make it whatever you want to. Once you've decided how you're going to draw your setting, you could start to think of some adjectives to write in there. So you could write um, clear sky. Or clear, yeah, clear sky. Uh, peaceful birds. Sometimes they are quite peaceful, you know, when birds are just soaring in the in the sky and gliding, it makes you feel quite peaceful to watch them. And I'm going to have tall trees, or maybe sometimes I think words like big and tall, they're okay, but we can always think of better words, maybe gi giant or colossal. Try and think of some really exciting words, even better than the ones I've used. Uh, tall trees, peaceful birds, clear sky, um, green. Oh, you know what's a really good trick? When you're describing colours, instead of using the colour word like green, think of the gem. So, you know, like gems that you, you collect, like rubies, diamonds, things like that. Those jewels. So when it's a green one, it's called an emerald So or an emerald. So instead of saying green grass, I'm going to say emerald grass. Because that helps the person who's hearing about this grass think, wow, that grass sounds delightful. Oops, emerald grass, tall trees, peaceful birds, clear sky, um, beautiful flowers. Remember, B, E, A, U, tiful. This is a very hard word to spell. B, E, A, U, tiful flowers. If you're using the word beautiful, try your best to spell it perfectly because it is quite tricky. Now I've done those words up here, I could start to use them in sentences. So my sentence could be, they lived in a jungle with tall trees. They, because the more we write now, the more we, the easier it will be when we write our real story. They lived, lived in, and I'm still using my finger spaces. A jungle, j or n g o. They lived in a jungle with. Which one shall I use? Hmm. I'm going to go for tall trees. Oh, you know what? I could make this a two-way sentence by adding not just one adjective, but two tall, towering trees. That means they tower over them, they're really big. Tall, towering trees. And I know some of us have learnt about uh, alliteration, that's the, the, the t sound getting repeated. Tall, towering trees, t t that gives a nice rhythm to your writing to make it even more interesting. They lived in a jungle with tall towering trees. Next, we could write uh, the emerald grass was fresh and hmm, lovely. The emerald grass, M -er old. G -er -a -s -u -a -s oh, there's our word from this morning. Can you remember our tricky word? One that we've done up here. W -a -s was. Spells was. The emerald grass was uh, fresh and lovely. F -er -a -sh and L love. L O V E. Lee, L Y. I've got two examples of sentences there. Uh, this week for our classes, we've sent out um, a, a list of sentences. If you're struggling to think of ideas, uh, we've written some boring sentences that need some 
exciting words and adjectives to make them better. So if you are struggling to think of words for your uh, sentences for yourself, use that sheet, ask your grown up if they can either print or write it out for you and try to make those sentences better. OK, if not, you can invent your own. That's absolutely fine. Just make sure you're using capital letters, full stops, finger spaces and make sure it makes sense. OK, and today's mega challenge was to use adjectives, wasn't it? We're getting really good at these now. A, D, J, adjectives. OK, I'd love to see what you come up with. Maybe you could share it on our blog or on Twitter. Thanks, everybody. For topic today, what I'd like you to do is research an animal of your choice and I want you to try your best to make a fact file about that animal. So I've done one here for lemurs friends who are ring-tailed ring -tailed lemurs. So we've, I've had a little go at drawing one here and then I found out how long they live. So it's lifespan, 16 to 19 years. Mass, that means how heavy something is, 2.2 uh, kilograms, so how much mass it's got, how what it's made of. So then we've got diet, it's an omnivore. My class can, um, and Miss H's class, can you remember what omnivore means? It means that it eats meat and plants, it doesn't just eat one. So lemurs actually eat spiders as well, insects and spiders, and then they eat fruit and bits of trees as well. Unfortunately, they are endangered. So I've put that one in red. That means they're in danger of, of dying out as a species. I know it's really sad. We've got to do our best to look after the world, don't we? And all the creatures in it. Then here it says its tail is longer than its body. We had a look, didn't we, Lima? And look, it's true. Lima's tail is longer than his body too. They live in Madagascar off the east coast of Africa. So you could tell me where your animal lives, which continent, which countries it might appear in. Male lemurs battle by trying to outstink each other. I was wondering what that smell was, lemur. <laughs> so they apparently they make their tails smelly and then they wave them at each other to see who's the strongest and smelliest, which I thought was quite funny. Then it says here, they live in groups of up to 30 and they're called a troop. I should have put that one and I forgot to put that. And then it says here, their forests are quickly vanishing, exclamation mark. So I've got loads of facts on here. You can choose how to show your fact file. I decided to do it kind of like a poster with pictures and information and boxes. Um, you can always get more creative with yours. I, I could have actually coloured this in and maybe done each box a different colour. And that way it would have been more eye catching. So. Once you've written it, perhaps you can take your time, do some really nice colouring to make your picture nice and bright. I'd love to see your animal fact files if you don't mind, so do share them. Uh, happy learning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today, everybody. Uh, I hope you've had a good time learning with me. Um, thank you so much for those of you who've been sharing your learning, either through emails or the blog or on Twitter or anything like that. It's lovely to see that some of you have been baking and planting seeds and doing loads of maths and reading. It's excellent. I'm really proud of you all. So well done and keep it up. Uh, I'm going to put some links in the description below that should help you with your research for the topic challenge that I've set you, uh, that we've set you this week. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to sh do those and then show me. That would be really lovely to see. I'd really like to learn about some more animals. So if you don't mind sharing, that'd be fab. I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.